When your back is to the wall, you can just change it to a mini game of get away from the wall. Focus on reads and like counter hits when you have better intel on your opponent. But in a matchup you're not too familiar with, just simplify, simplify. Yeah, use Fang's poking game to set up your counter hit game. Use Fang's poking game to set up your parry game. But opening up with parries is assuming they're going to do something that you just haven't conditioned them to do. You're throwing out all these parries and these hand waves as you're just kicking your shins. It doesn't do anything, you know? A standard character like Kazumi might go jab, jab, sidestep, down forward one, down forward one, sidestep, right? Fang can jab, jab, down back three, go under something, jab, down forward one, wiggle his hands around, kill you, you know? Like, every character can play this game. Fang has access to more ways to play it. So to not play that game and play this spacing game like you're Noctis or something, it's like a fish trying to climb a tree, you know? Like, you can do it, but why do it like that, you know? All right, so we're doing another VOD review. This is for a Fang player, PDX Firebird. What I'm looking for Firebird to do is see what does he know about Brian? How does he handle things that are um, unconventional? And uh, what is his knowledge of Brian's key moves in general? And seeing how he shuts down her game plan around that. So we're going to watch through the whole thing first. And then we'll rewind and we'll go through and review with a fine-toothed comb. Let's get into it. Uh, Charlene, ref in the... Uh... The, the silk, the tiger silk t-shirt. All right, all right. I like it, I like it. And, of course, the vanilla Fang. And now, one thing I think Fang does have the edge on is down back three evading uh, Brian's fastest counter hit tool, which is Magic 4. Right? So, all of these, the slow wind-up low that she did, the wedge driver, it's a really cheesy move. It has a 29-frame startup, so... Until she starts blocking and punishing it, down back three is so freaking strong in this. And Fang has the back one. Back one, I think, is the input, but it's like the quick counter hit knockdown that gives shoulder. That's super good, too, because Brian is all slow startup. And those are two tools I remember. I watched this a bit earlier, and I think that those would be good to use. Okay. All right, we got the day. There's a lot of challenging there. Um, we'll review that again when we come back around, but I think getting away from the wall is the priority, not challenging the offense directly. Counter hit. Doesn't get the mini combo. That is not real, but we'll, you'll have to lab that. <laughs> so Brian... A frustrated Brian... will hit your block a lot, and Charlene answers that by going low 50 times in a row. So... When we talked about the set, one symptom you mentioned was, oh, I just didn't block any lows. But I think that is a indicative of also not leaning into Fang's strength of fast poking with good frames. Jesus Lord. Fast poking with good frames. Like, if you go down forward one and you're zero against Brian, the only move you can you should be afraid of is like uh, magic four. And your down back three answers that. So you can dictate the pace and just not let her use all these slow wind-up moves. You have all these fast counter-hit tools. And Brian is looking to place like a back one and get counter-hits or get place like a forward three. And at the range Fang can approach from and stuff things, I think the match should be looking different fundamentally. So aside from being in a position where you need to block lows, leaning into Fang's strength of being able to come in and out really quickly, good whiff punishment, and just like a strong poking game with like small mixes, I think the Brian should be pretty miserable. That's my take on the matchup. Yep. Yeah, she didn't punch that. Nice. Yeah, stuff like that. That's, that's... dang, it's choppy. You're right. Okay. Was that a missed input? That's a minus 13, but you should try to low parry and then dick jab if she cancels. We were just libbing that earlier. Yeah, there we go. Nice. You adapted well, but you didn't exactly know what you were doing. Well, let's see if we can find out. I see down back three being used, period, which is good. <laughs> that move is so strong, dude. Honestly, this is going to sound really basic and really patronizing, but you're attacking. <laughs> Do you see how many counter hits you're landing just doing your moves? That's because she's, she's attacking at the same timing she was in game one. 
Slow, approaching, advancing lows. Huge startup. Nice launch punish, right? A nice block, hatchet kick. Good punish. Charlene now trying to oh, get some momentum back. This is a very Oh, that was a good punish. Yeah, there we go. Whip on the hatchet kick. Interesting. But gets a wall standing one. Gets the If you expect her to spam hatchet, by the way, sidewalk left. Uh oh. Has nice hit confirm. Rage art? No, Rage Art. Rage Art kills. If you lose, that's a feedy X round. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Nice, nice, nice. So yeah. If you think Hatchet is coming, just sidewalk left. A general tip you can remember against Brian is mids to the right, lows to the left. A few exceptions are if you get hit by Hatchet, the next Hatchet's pretty much homing. <laughs> Around like plus five. But in the neutral, if you're scouting out his mids, this is how I play against Accumajor primarily. Is in the neutral, I'll space in a position where he might look to go mid, and I'll start spamming sidewalk right. And then in up close situations where I expect a hatchet, I'll either low parry or a sidewalk left. The hatchet is so hard to step though, so. Down forward one and down forward two track opposite ways, right? I'll have to double check my notes. I believe that's the case. Let me check real quick. Good question, fax machine. Uh, down forward one tracks left. Uh, against down back two, and I believe down forward two, track to the right. Or other way around. Right. Down forward one, track sidestep right. The, best stage. the others track sidestep left. Shirt. But after hatchet kick, you can't really step anything, so it's kind of yeah. guess. Yeah, That's yeah. kind of why hatchet's really annoying. Takes away your movement for the next interaction. In the rear. Ooh, had the back hatchet. So much work, but yeah. See, hatchet I don't... One thing I think you can do here also is don't challenge your way out of the wall. Just move your way out of the wall. Fang has incredible access to back one to stuff things. Jab to just the plain jab. And then down forward one being zero. Like, you don't have to mash your way out of the wall. You can start jabbing to get your frames. And then start doing micro sidesteps to get away. Back one as well. Using that down one plus two? I know, right? <laughs> Up giving advice against Brian? Oh, man. So, like, this is generic advice, but, like, I think you're at a point where you can entertain the 3D component of the game. Because you're... It looks like, based on watching just your character model, it's between the mid-low guessing. It's like, oh, God, I don't want to duck because I'm going to get blown up. But I'm eating all these lows. Maybe I can press my way out of it. And that's kind of a rudimentary approach. A more, I think, like, mature way to look at the matchup is like, okay, can I move in a way that nullifies this mix in the first place? Um, can I play my offense in, in tournament? Can I play my offense in a way that avoids these situations altogether? Nice. I like that down back three a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh my god. Oh my god. Alright, so the first thing I want to do is rewatch game three because you were talking about adjustments and I wasn't watching carefully enough because I was just talking. So let me rewatch game three. That's my fault. <laughs> Let's look at what she was doing that was working and what you were doing that wasn't working. See, this poking game is so good. Against Brian, especially. You're only afraid of Magic 4. Like, he's not going to do some crazy evasive move unless he goes for Snake Edge, right? And then here, yeah. So, look at here. How do you die here? Wall splat, counter hit. He can't do any of that to you if you just start jabbing and sidestepping left. Like, losing this is a little sad. Those quick pokes will trap your movement. But I notice you're pressing buttons instead of, like, step blocking. This is hilarious. There's a punish there. Another thing to consider is like, yes, it's scary getting oppressed like that, but your HP is a resource. Okay. So consider, I know, <laughs> what is that pressure? Consider what Brian is thinking about doing. Like empathize with your opponent. You're, have, you have them at the wall, and if they just stand block, what is the only way they kill you? Low, 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 right? So she's spamming counter hits because it's chipping you down. If you don't swing at all here, None of these hit.
boogie hatchet kick. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. god. That's that's not not funny. Funny. So let the offense fizzle out and then just get away from the wall. You can you can shrink it to mini games, you know? It doesn't have to be just kill them here. It's okay, in this situation, I just want to get away from the wall. Like, this HP lead is really sad to throw, right? And you know that, but, like, let's look at why, right? Punish. Sabaki gets punished. Low. Hatchet. Yeah, just a lot of mashing. But if you just punish that and get out, there will be holes in her offense, you know? But I don't even know the frames on 1-4. Let me look at that. Uh... I have my phone here with the uh, frame data bot. Brian 1 4. Plus 4 on hit. You're never going to mash that. <laughs> Outmash that. So, let's come up with a game plan for the next one, right? So, in a matchup that you're unfamiliar, you do not want to play the frame challenge game, right? Panic at the wall, real bad? Yeah, yeah. So, in an unfamiliar matchup, in a tournament setting, the key uh, strategies a lot of people use are play their offensive game. Um, play their offensive game and don't challenge frames you don't know, including missing punishes. So you'll see, like, Run It Black used to do that against me a lot, and it just didn't work because I was hyper aware. But. And nice cancel. She uses that so well. Like. I prefer this defense with respect, with respect, like respecting situations you don't have to respect. I'm okay with that in a tournament setting versus trying to challenge frame situations that you have no business challenging is a lot of a sillier way to kill yourself, right? So the honestly, the reason she won is she just kept playing like jabs and stuff to put you up plus four, make you hesitate and then just like mash you. Which isn't necessarily and like oh, hatchet kick. Oh my God. right. So even if you don't know how to play against Brian, what Fang does well can still be done, right? And do that until it stops working. You see a four strings, yeah. See, and like I didn't even know that, but when I play against Brian, I'm strictly I play Noctis's game, and then I sidestep the mids and hellos, right? So game three is a lot of pressing. <laughs> I think that's a good summary. Game three, I think, showed your Fang game plan of using his stances and his evasion and stuff like that. But game two shows a good understanding, I think, of just Fang's poking game being so strong, you know? And that's what you want to lean into. In an unfamiliar matchup, it's really hard to play... Okay, shoulder, young girl. Or, it, like, on a fundamental level, playing against an opponent who just goes zero all the time, or minus one, or plus one, and has evasion, that's really scary. But your opponent has no reason to respect your sabakis and stuff. Sorry, your opponent has no reason to press into your sabakis and your parries if you're not pressuring them to do, like, jabs and things like that. If you're only doing stance stuff and she's just doing huge power lows, like, it's never going to work, right? So... Let's summarize what a good approach would be. I think game one showed a lot of not poking, right? A lot of, like, a lot of movement, but movement without too much intent. So let's look at it. So this poking is good. And then at this spacing, a lot of idle. And, like, it makes sense to be idle when Brian has, like, counter hit tools that are really scary. But once you get, like, once you see her kind of dashing in your face, it's a good strategy to do what you did, right? And start pushing your advantage a bit. Like, driving the situations with Fang is way scary for the opponent. That was a press. End of this combo. How'd you drop the combo? A toe kick to make some space. Yeah, and take your space with jabs. Brian's... Again, the scary counter hits cannot outpace your jab unless you're really playing in a weird, like, okay. timing. All right, we got and yeah, I can see the wall panic you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seemed like he was a little bit scared to push the button. So, ooh, counter hit, hatchet kick, nice ball. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, it seemed like he was, was this a QCF approach? So, oh, down back three. I like that down back three, to be honest. Even though it traded, I think that's a good down back three. Oh, here we go. Spin a Rooney. 
to the wedge driver. Oh, try oh man, let's go. Okay, okay. Charlene, real feeling herself right now. Yeah. Oh, Brian Buggy. Oh, Struggle against opponents that are very aggressive. The thing is... Oh, I tried to go for the fancier combo. That's yeah. not quite get it. I think that's too general of a... I mean, you said generally, right? But like... I think that's a general classification that you need to dig into deeper. Like, how is Charlene aggressive? Charlene is doing a lot of quick cancels that are like fake. Like a Xiao Yu main playing Brian, you know? Like, the frames and paper favor you. The only time it didn't was when you were doing, um... That game three wall situation. That's good. And this is a Tao This is like a Xiao Yu player, <laughs> you know? Right, so I think adjusting your mental stack, right? So, like, people throw on that term a lot, and I'm guilty of it too, but I think this actually applies here. So, like, your back is to the wall. You can change the mini game to... I need to get away from the wall, right? Especially against Brian, because Taunt just becomes fully online at the wall. You can just change your game plan to jab, sidestep to get away from the wall. Back one. Uh, you know, you don't need to hop kick your way out of the wall. That's one thing. Next thing is, if Brian is spamming lows on you like that, your down back three is a really good choice. And even though it was not working in game one, I like how you leaned into it in game two. Because it really is such a strong move. Back one, get some pressure. Okay, nice interrupt by Charlotte. Ooh, nice tech pull. Gets a gets a pretty decent combo. Nice block. No punish. Nice block on the wedge driver. No punish though, unfortunately. Yeah, look at that. You just caught her coming in over and over again. Yeah, uh, Cozy Lord raises a good point. Like once you make them think about keeping you at the wall, they're not trying to mix you as hard, and they're just using ideally going to use smaller moves, and that gives you windows of opportunity to be less. About to die, you know. Uh, yep, that's fine. I don't see a need to sabaki there. I mean, it is kind of it's kind of greedy, especially against Brian with elbows and shit. Oh, get some momentum back. This is a very Oof. Wow, what a weird whip on the hatchet kick. Interesting. But gets a wall standing one, gets the, the tax refund on it. Okay. Oh, this yeah, this is sounds like really stupid generic advice, but I honestly think it's appropriate. Like down forward one is so strong here. And yeah, gonna spend the short tax refund on it. Okay. Oh, because uh oh. Has momentum shifted. Oh, really press the minus I know, right? Like you win this round because she you counter hit her over and over again, and you lose the last one because she counter hits you over and over again, over and over again, right? But both of you are just kind of pressing into each other. It's not like a mind game. It's more of a rhythm game. What you want to do, I think, to overcome a player like this, yeah, like look at that. That if you did this the whole game, that's it's over, you know. That, this little section of gameplay is like, textbook fang for me. Like, this is what I hate playing against. It's not even about the setup. It's, what is this down forward four with that poke? Fang, down forward four. Plus five on hit? Jesus. That's down forward four, right? Or is that back four? That's back four? Shirts versus shirtless. Yeah. Okay, let me look at that. Okay, so this is what I like to see. This is what I like, alright? I'm gonna talk a bit more because I know more. So Fang back four, you're plus two. If she she spends more frames moving in, you get a free mix. I don't even know what that is on hit, but you're like you're effectively at advantage. You use a jab to check her, right? Headbutt, you're plus. Jab, check works, you're plus eight. Down forward one puts you at zero. She has shown that she's willing to be antsy the entire time. You check her with back one. Guaranteed follow-up. That's a whiff you can look for, by the way. Like, you have a knockdown? What are you afraid of at this range of her killing you with? Go in and make her a whiff, you know? Fang is scary. Don't give in to the Fang down players, okay? Your close-up game is scary, and your moveset lets you get in really quickly, okay? So, Charlene, especially being a swinger, that's something you can pay attention to and assess like, okay, if I can get her to whiff, it's going to be disgusting. And I, 
And Fang has disgusting whiff punishment. And then, yeah, we press our way to death. Dang, this is very back and forth already. This, I heard yeah, because, like, the mix-up, the Oki game mix-up, as you said, I never even thought about fishing for a whiff after that. The Oki game mix-up, in general, right, is, okay, I need to wake up. If I wake up and just press a button, my opponent, like, I, I, so I'm the defender. If I wake up and press a button, I can get hit. If my opponent, if I stay down, my opponent can hit me while I'm down. Let me, let me back up. Shirtless. As the defender, skins. when the task is to wake up, we can look at it in rock, paper, scissors, right? Okay, so I'm down. If my opponent, if I stay down, my opponent can just come and hit me, right? If I just stand up, my opponent can get a standing mix-up on me. If I do a get-up kick, I can ignore their mix-up and just try and counter-hit them, right? So as the attacker, how do you cover that? They stay down, you hit them on the ground. They stand block, you mix them up. Okay. They try to counter hit you, you whiff punish. That's kind of a good way to look at the rock, paper, scissors of Okazemi. And it can get more complicated if your character has like throws and shit. But if you only play one component of rock, paper, scissors, like if you only have rock, you're missing a lot of opportunities. Okay. And sidestep right, I think evo evades almost every wake up option. Uh, that, uh, wake up attack. I don't want to watch that again. <laughs> that was painful. But that makes sense, right? Like, you saw your success in game two was on huge counter hits. And Fang thrives on that with his aggressive poking game. They synergize really well. So it's less about, I think, your setups, like down forward one, back one, or your approaches with QCF, the headbutt. I don't know if it's QCF 1 plus 2 or something. It's less about the specific choices there, but I think... Using down forward one as zero to dictate the pace. Like, if you're down forward one and she's blocking, even though you're at zero, she's not canceling into you, right? She's not allowed to set up these huge counter hits or these power lows. You're driving the pace of it. Even though it's a neutral situation, controlling the rhythm that way makes it less to deal with. You don't have to guess when the low is coming. And it stresses them out more so you can get your counter hits in. Unfortunately, doesn't... Like, this? If I tried to dash into a fang three times like this, I would get hop kicked, I would get back one I would get down back three I would get down forward one, and if fang down forward one hits, what's the advantage? Fang down forward one. Plus six! You can take them out back, shoot them, bring their body back, and bury them with that time, dude. Like, your down forward one is monstrous. Especially against Brian, who doesn't have a regular down forward one. All you're afraid of is Magic 4. And even then, she didn't do Magic 4 like once. Look at all these counter hit lows that hit. It doesn't have to be a launching low. That can be a down forward one stuffing her approach, giving you a mix up. What you did here, which worked in game two, that could easily just be dash up down forward one. And then watch how she responds. Dash up down forward one, she goes low. Next time you do down forward one, you sidestep left and the low misses and you kill her. Run up down forward one, she goes for mid, you sidestep right, you kill her, right? Like, you dictate at z the zero frame game, although on paper is neutral, you have a slight advantage as the attacker because you initiate it, right? You have the initiative. So the opponent has to be really sharp and understand when you're going for that in order to answer it properly. But because you have the initiative, you get like first action. So unless they have a preloaded answer that you let yourself be predictable to handle, or they've labbed it so carefully, etc., zero is theoretically an advantage for you because you drive the next interaction. So, let's summarize. Against Brian, you have the speed advantage. Listen to what Brian mains complain about. He doesn't have any fast pokes. <laughs> you know? So use your poking game to outpace him and drive the match, and then the attacks will start coming in at predictable rhythms. And if they're not, that's up to you to observe more, right? Sidestep right the mids, sidestep left the lows. Unless you get hit by a hatchet, then you have to deal with it. Yeah, use Fang's poking game to set up your counter hit game. Use Fang's poking game to set up your parry game. But opening up with parries is assuming they're going to do something that you just haven't conditioned them to do. You're throwing out all these parries and these hand waves as you're just kicking your shins. It doesn't do anything, you know? You just can't overstate how important timings are. Yeah. And by driving the pace with these constant pokes and harassment, you minimize the window of timings you have to deal with. 
Because you do if you do nothing, her timings can land anywhere in this range. Instant, delay, half delay, charge cancel everywhere. But if you put the frame situation at zero with a poke, she either like does it right away or kind of delays it. Or deals with your next poke. So you minimize how big of a range of attacks you have to deal with if you're the one attacking. And as a fast poker, you have the initiative to do that. So, use your poking game, especially against Brian. You don't have to guess mid-low if you know which direction to move, unless the character's like a DLC character with monster tracking, right? And then lastly, when your back is to the wall, you can just change it to a minigame of get away from the wall. You can focus on reads and like counter hits and getting out of the wall explosively when you have better intel on your opponent. But in a matchup you're not too familiar with, just simplify, simplify. Jab is plus one on block. Your down forward one is zero on block. Those are really powerful. And then down back three counter hits when they try to use highs to interrupt your fast pokes. I'm convinced I could lose to a Fang who just does jab, down forward one, uh, and down back three. Because of the evasive counter hit property of the low and the oppression of the poke game. I think that's a good approach to look at. at. Based on this, I think that is a good thing to focus on that will get you a lot of mileage. Your jab, your down forward one game, using up close movement to evade their counters, or using Fang's built in evasion, right? So, a standard character like Kazumi might go jab, jab, sidestep, jab, jab, sidestep, down forward one, down forward one, sidestep, right? Fang can jab, jab, down back three, go under something, jab, down forward one, back one, jab, down forward one, wiggle his hands around, kill you, you know? Like, Every character can play this game. Fang has access to more ways to play it. So to not play that game and play this spacing game like you're Noctis or something, it's like, it's like a fish trying to climb a tree, you know? Like, you can do it, but why do it like that, you know? Anyways, I hope that was helpful. Um, I will upload that to YouTube. Hopefully cut it down into a bit more cleaner pros and shit. Do you have any last questions while we're here? Booty, no! Firebird says. Oh, hatchet kick. Oh, I'm honestly tempted to go into player matches and just play with those three moves. Honestly, yeah, it's a good exercise. Oh, baby, I, like I do that sometimes in my viewer matches. Said as you're typing, I'm a genius. Do you have any last questions? Alright. Neutrals reset right here. Firebird looking to fish. I don't think so. My demon later, if I can give you another place in Okay, cool. Doing silly experience with that would be pretty fun. Death is only Paul. Where's a <laughs> Death Fist Demo Man Paul? Fucking tight, dude. But yeah, I'm excited to see how you handle it next time. I think that'll be pretty good.